Hi guys, so today we have another interesting topic. Another question that I've been getting a lot is uh, the HARC versus RLC and uh, how the retransmissions work. So I thought I will just make another short video and explain that. Now, uh, the important point to remember is that both LTE and 5G, so 4G and 5G, both have RLC and MAC and they have a similar mechanism of RLC retransmissions and HARC retransmission. Now, in, in 5G, technically speaking, we do have some changes in the RLC layer, but as far as the retransmission mechanism is concerned, at, an, at, a, at, a, at a broader picture, it is uh, still similar. So, in this um, diagram, in this session, we'll talk about the conceptual level, and that is a very simplistic overview that will apply to both LTE and 5G. So let's start over here and uh, we can understand as we go on. So let's say we have a packet that we need to transmit from the E node B or G node B towards the UE. So the RLC layer inside the E node B or the G node B will get the packet from the PDCP layer and then it will send it to the lower layer like the MAC or the physical layer. Now the MAC layer or physical layer will then send that packet over the air. <clears throat> so, uh, that will be the initial HARC transmission. So, if the UE is able to decode this, UE will send acknowledgement and once the UE sends ACK, then that means the packet is decoded and that's the end of this packet, right? But if the UE is, let's say, in a bad radio condition, such that the UE is unable to decode this packet, then the UE will send a NAC a negative acknowledgement. In that case, the MAC layer will then initiate retransmissions at the HARC level. So, it will then send the first retransmission. If the UE is unable to decode that as well, it will send a NAC. Then the G, the G node B or the E node B will send the second HARC retransmission. If that is all that also fails, then third HARC retransmission. If that also fails, then fourth HARC retransmission. Now, um, it is configurable mostly, but normal, normally we have first one initial transmission and four retransmission. If all of them fail, we say that the HARC process for this uh, packet has failed. Now, what is the, uh, uh, the outcome of this? From the, uh, the outcome perspective, the UE will not um, have any problem. The UE will stay, still stay connected to the system. Uh, the E node B or the G node B will use these uh, NACs as an indicator that the UE is in bad radio conditions. So they will do link adaptation and reduce the MCS. For instance, uh, if, you, if E node B or G node B are using 64 QAM, they might go down to 16 QAM or even QPSK to make the link more robust. But from the connection perspective, the UE will still remain connected and it will still uh, uh, st will, st will still look forward to get more data. Now what happens at this layer? Now because the packet is not transmitted successfully and the packet needs to be sent, so the E node B's or G node B's RLC layer will then initiate the first RLC retransmission. Now the RLC retransmissions are usually set in a way that they only get triggered once all the HARC uh, transmissions have failed. Now if uh, this is based on some timer values but that is how the usually all the vendors all the implementations uh, configure it because it would not make sense to trigger an RLC retransmission over here when the HARC is not already uh, fully utilized. So it usually happens after all the HARC fa um, transmissions have failed uh, or have gone through. Then once you send the first RLC retransmission the packet is again sent to the MAC layer and MAC layer tries again to send the packet over the air. Now if, if let's say let's say for the example that uh, it fails again then the second RLC retransmission will happen and again uh, the MAC layer will try to send all these packets over the air all the packet over the air and it might fail as well. Now similarly as we have maximum number of HARC retransmissions we also have a maximum number of RLC retransmissions. Now, if uh, the system um, keeps trying to resend the packet and every time the UE is unable to decode it, then a time will come where we will reach 
the maximum RLC retransmission count. Now, let's say it's if it's eight. So if we have eight retransmissions on the RLC, then the system will assume that the UE is in very, very bad conditions. It, it cannot maintain a, um, a valid signal level, a valid connection. So once all the RLC retransmissions have um, exceeded, then the connection is dropped. So from the UE's perspective, we will have a call drop. And uh, that is the, one of the major differences between RLC and HARC as well, that a HARC retransmissions, even if they expire, they do not cause a drop. But uh, RLC level, when all the RLC retransmissions have expired, have reached, reached the maximum threshold, the system drops uh, the connection and we have a connection drop. So that is how they work together. In On a broader sense, uh, each RLC transmission will take the packet from RLC layer to the MAC layer. MAC will try to send the packet over the air using HARC retransmissions. And once uh, all the HARC uh, retransmissions have failed, then the RLC layer will retransmit re the packet again to the MAC layer to, okay, here is a packet, try again. And that is how uh, we have the combination of RLC and HARC coming together to give us a very robust link uh, in the system. So um, that's all for uh, today. Uh, let's. I hope that you like it. If you have more questions, please uh, put them in the comment section and I will prepare more short videos for the top questions. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.